plus négatif dans mon esprit, c'est la peur. C'est horrible. C'est la pire de toutes les émotions. Parce que la peur, ça t'empêche de penser. Par exemple, je sais pas, un mec qui veut tuer une personne, tu vois, avec un couteau qui pose un flingue sur la tempe de quelqu'un. La personne en face va avoir une peur telle. Son esprit sera vide. Elle aura aucune pensée, elle va juste se poser la question simple et logique dans sa tête. Est-ce que je vais mourir maintenant created the painting after I saw the lone French boy on the Pihar Road. And afterwards, when I heard that he was missing, it played on my mind so much that I had to create a painting, which is the lone walker, to actually know, ease the burden, as it were, of that, that poor lone guy walking down the road. This is where I saw him, just about here now. This stretch here, this straight. And I drove over on this side to go round him. Ted Scott saw Elwa that day. He's haunted by the disappearance. I find it very difficult to sleep. I just can't put the situation out of my mind. I do know Ted Scott. Uh, he was one of the very first people that messaged and approached us when I started the Facebook page. It was because of the information that he gave us was the reason why we started the search from that place, from the bridge, to start the search from his last seen location. On that morning, I was driving to Glen Eden to play bowls. So I had to be at the bowls club for a nine o'clock start. So the time I was on this road were between 8 and 8.30. Pourtant, à la même heure, la caméra de surveillance d'une station-service enregistre la toute dernière image des lois, à une heure et demie de marche du parking, près duquel Ted Scott affirme l'avoir vu. Um, I've got a photographic memory, and that's why I'm a photographer. And so I've still got that image of him walking. And so I'm sort of 99.9% .9 sure that that's who I saw, was that young man. Other walkers because they're so close to the road, are always on the alert. They're always looking at you or watching. He had his head down and he was just looking in front of him. He didn't look either side. And that's one of the reasons I, I knew he was in trouble. He, he just looked like a person in another space. I didn't actually play bowls that morning, so I was back here about half an hour later. I'll keep a lookout for him on the way back, you know, in case he needs help. But there was no sign of him, so given up looking for him. If he had seen Alawa at the time that he had seen him, he still should have seen Alawa on the way back. Because from where he last saw him, it would still take more than an hour and a half walking on foot. So yeah, that's my belief of Ted Scott's story. Uh, I regret that I didn't stop, but it's a very difficult place to stop. It's too dangerous. So I, I passed him on the straight. Dans le rapport d'enquête présenté à la famille, le témoignage de Ted Scott est mentionné sans précision d'horaire. 
pour le faire correspondre à un deuxième témoignage, celui d'un couple australien qui signale avoir croisé Eloi à 9h30 sur Pierre Road, deux kilomètres après le parking. Et le dernier témoin qui l'a vu marcher au bord de la route, c'est ici qu'il l'a vu. qu'il a fait 15 km à pied. D'après les échanges Messenger avec les témoins, il semble y avoir une erreur sur la localisation. C'est donc bien aux alentours de 9h30 et au même endroit que Ted Scott et les témoins australiens auraient croisé Eloi en approche du parking. Cette zone correspond aussi à la dernière géolocalisation du téléphone d'Eloi qui à 9h48 tombe en panne de batterie et cesse d'émettre. Parce que là, il y a un accès là, ici Non. Non, pas d'accès là. This is a close track. Mais ici, pour marcher, c'est impossible. Ouais. Ici, euh, c'est comme c'est comme la jungle. Il faut il faut pouvoir couper la végétation, se faire un passage. Et là, ici, c'est impossible. My name's Ross Forbes. I was born and raised here in the bush, so I know it very well. If he got lost in the bush, he would have had a very difficult time um, trying to get through that forest. You can walk 100 meters and get disorientated quite easily. He could have broken a leg, but there's no, there's no wild animals. There's nothing, no snakes, wolves, Nothing that's going to kill you, but eventually hunger would kill you. The most dangerous thing in the bush up here is just the nature of it, the fact that it is very thick. When you're in it, often you can't see further than a metre in front of you, that you have to crawl around on your hands and knees to get past all the vines. Le scénario qu'il ait eu un accident dans la forêt avant de mourir serait le, le plus plausible. Voilà. Si on admet cette hypothèse, qu'est-ce qui aurait pu inciter Eloi à quitter la route pour s'aventurer dans le bush Donc on ne sait pas évidemment s'il y avait des hallucinations ou euh, pendant qu'il marchait, surtout le jour où il s'est perdu. On ne sait pas vraiment ce qui se passait dans sa tête. On a quelqu'un qui a un itinéraire assez logique. Pour ses prémédités, il cherche l'itinéraire trois jours avant et je regarde les transports. J'ai une destination, euh, je vais y aller. Ça a complété 19 jours de recherche. Of that, police search dogs were used for 13 days. A combination of tracking dogs and victim recovery dogs have been used throughout the search. Malgré tout ce dispositif, rien ne ressort de ces recherches. Aucun indice, aucune trace ne permet d'étayer cette hypothèse. C'est plus un schéma répétitif qu'ils essaient de coller. Il est venu, il a trop bu, il s'est perdu dans la forêt. Et après, c'est impossible de les faire sortir de ça. As you would know, driving down Piha Road, it's not a straight road, it's quite a narrow road. So if he was walking up Piha Road, there is a possibility someone could have cut him off, hit him, chucked him in the bush. If he'd been hit by a car on this road, his body would have been found very quickly. Uh, there were whole searches of this road from one end to the other. So we're about to have our surf international event. So you have people that come in maybe a month, two months in advance just to get here because accommodation gets really booked fast because it's high peak season here for summer. Like it's one of the busiest beaches in summer here every year. North Piha, South Side Piha, you've got along down to Karikari Beach, it's all always packed. 
and that road is guaranteed busy before eight o'clock. More than likely somebody else would have seen him being hit by that car, so that's not that likely. Or they could have possibly taken him. In Māori culture here in New Zealand, they have a myth that years, years, years ago, there was a woman's husband had gone fishing, um, gone out on his waka, which is a boat on the shores of Pihar, and her partner never returned from sea. And every time a body goes missing out at sea, it's believed that she's taken them because of how she never had her partner return back to her. That's why that area is quite tapu. Tapu in English is sacred. There are things that you just don't do on the beachland because it always comes back to you. That is the reason why that statue is there, is to believe that she is guarding that area because of bad things that could be happening in the area. It was, yeah, it's a heartbroken woman. I believe there's maybe a few bad people in Piha. Out here, the main problem is drugs. Because the location is, is fairly remote, isolated, um, being so close to a major city, there's always been a problem with drugs manufacturing. So that is in sort of in the background. Gangs are growing at the fastest rate since the 1970s, with many of the recruits being young people. It's thought the huge profits being made from methamphetamine, or P, is behind the leap in numbers. A gang patch is enough to intimidate most New Zealanders, and it's a sight we could be seeing more often. Over the past two years, gang numbers have risen dramatically, from just over 5,000 to 6,729. The police estimate around $500 million every single year goes into the back pocket of gangs. The P-Trade has also attracted the arrival of the sophisticated Australian motorbike gangs. Many use social media to recruit. Yeah, I've received threats, quite a few of them, to watch my back. You shouldn't be digging into stuff. It could get me into trouble or I could possibly be hurt. And a lot of those people know information or know things that happen in Piha or know where he is. Whether he be alive or not, they keep very quiet about it. There's also a theory is there's a serial killer. So it's a bit of a mystery, really. In terms of criminal element, Nothing can be ruled out at this point, uh, but there's no evidence from what we have on file to suggest there's any criminal element in his disappearance. But then again, where's your evidence or proof to support that, that it wasn't criminal? Ella was not the first person to go missing in Piha. There have been five other people that have gone missing, and none of their bodies have been recovered or found. None of them. Things happen out there. I don't know what it is, but I do believe it's criminal. The very first person that went missing in Piha that we currently know of was Quinton. He went missing in 92. Thank you. I'd like to say to you that your family, your friends and your grandparents in England, we all talk about you a lot. We miss you heaps and we'd love to hear from you anytime, preferably soon. They believe that his death was an accident and the story was that he was hit by a car and his body was thrown into the Nihotupu Dam. A few years later we had our second person go missing and that was Irena Asher. It was all over the news. The shock admission from police this afternoon that a missing Auckland woman called them for help. Could you please um, come and get me from Pihar Road? 
but was instead sent a taxi. And yes, part of the response, uh, depending on the circumstances, will be to call them a taxi. It's now unclear how long it took that taxi to make it here and, in fact, if it made the journey at all. The coroner found Irena Ash's death was an accident during an emotional crisis and it's likely the bipolar model drowned in the unforgiving West Coast surf. The police file into Irena Ash's disappearance is now closed. Police say it will only be reopened if any remains are discovered. Again, another strange thing that has happened with police here where they should have done their job, but they didn't. A few years later, an older lady went missing and her name was Cherie a mother of two, I believe, at the time, going for a separation, last seen with her shoes in hand and a bottle of wine heading down to the beach. And her car, keys and phone were found in the car. They believed that she might have fallen off the cliffs, but when you fall down a cliff, down at Piha, where that Mercer Loop is, it's not a straight cliff drop. It's like, obviously, it's got lumps. You would hit the cliff on the way down and that theory has been proven because one person has fallen off accidentally. It's the next person who went uh, missing and her name was Kim. Young, energetic young lady in her early 20s. She was a, a nurse at the time, went for a run. Phone, car keys, etc. were found in the car. The strangest thing that I can't get out of my mind is her car was parked in the same spot where the first girl went missing. And both cars were unlocked at the time. So it's hard to believe that you would leave your keys and phone and your car unlocked when you go for a run or a walk around Mercer's Loop. About one year prior to Aloha going missing, another foreign student went missing the thing about that kid was he was never seen in Piha. Before he went disappear, he, he contacted his friend for an online game just two hours before his disappearance. But his car was found in the Piha car park down on the north side. It was the first time that anyone had put up a big reward for him to find out more information, and no one came through. So for a lot of people to go missing in Piha, and some of them already, you know, announced by the coroners here in New Zealand that presume dead or have died of either suicide or a drowning. It's, it's hard to stomach because, you know, their bodies haven't been found and everyone knows in Piha, if you drowned, you know where your bodies come back to. The three people that stood out the most to me, they're the last three of the six people him, Lawrence and Aloha, it, it stuck out to me because it was quite interesting that these three people went missing in the same month. There's a big gap missing in this puzzle of people gone missing because there's so many. Uh, six people is a lot. Moi, je me dis, peut-être que si en 2023, 2024, 2025, il y a quelqu'un d'autre qui disparaît dans le même contexte au mois de mars, bah. Ella's investigation was taken on its own merits in terms of its own circumstances. There's nothing to, for us to believe it has links with any other missing persons in the area. Il y a pas de lien certes, mais n'empêche que c'était quelqu'un qui n'était pas du coin. N'empêche que c'est la même période de l'année. N'empêche que ça fait le je sais pas combien tième. Alors est-ce que c'est parce que la Nouvelle-Zélande veut garder son image de de la ville la plus sécure du monde et tous ces trucs politiques qui font que bah il faut surtout pas qu'il y ait un lien. Peut-être c'est ça. Aucune investigation n'a tenté de relier ces différents cas de disparition. Pour Eloi, la piste criminelle n'a jamais été envisagée. Le relevé des téléphones bornant la même antenne et qui aurait permis d'établir la présence de témoins ou de suspects n'a jamais été demandé. La raison pour laquelle nous ne l'avons pas fait, c'est parce que nous n'avons pas les, le droit ou le pouvoir de le faire si nous ne suspectons pas quelque chose de criminel. Voilà. Um, in an area like Auckland, when we execute a search warrant for cell phone numbers, um, it can be hundreds of thousands of numbers. On n'a rien exploré en profondeur. 
C'est peut-être une affaire criminelle, c'est peut-être un tueur en série parce qu'il y a d'autres disparitions dans la région. C'est peut-être euh, un accident de voiture, quelqu'un l'a enterré dans son jardin, mais c'est quelque chose de très grave. Le procédé de la police de Nouvelle-Zélande témoigne d'une légèreté qui n'est pas à l'image de l'importance de l'enquête. Quelle que soit l'hypothèse, elle se confronte toujours à des contradictions. Il existe pourtant un autre scénario qui n'a pas été exploré et qui se fonde sur la nature même du lieu vers lequel nous ramènent les témoignages et la dernière géolocalisation. Le parking. The likelihood of somebody picking him up will be quite high because a lot of the traffic will be young tourists of this age going down to Piha to enjoy the coast. Ce qui ouvre la porte à une autre hypothèse. Qu'elle ne soit tout simplement pas là où on le cherche. C'est beau, mais c'est horrible à la fois. C'est comme casser des limites qui ne doivent pas être cassées. Il y a toujours le bien et le mal. Et t'as beau faire ce que tu veux, t'en prends toujours plein dans la gueule, quoi que tu fasses. Ça a assez duré ce délire. Et plus jamais je fais ces, ces conneries. Je plus jamais. Plus jamais. C'est fini. Plus jamais. L'histoire des lois est tellement triste parce que qu'ils se fassent kidnapper, qu'ils se fassent persécuter ou qu'ils se soient volatilisés. En vrai, les lois, c'est le problème de qui Personne ne le cherche. Le 17 avril 2020, c'est ma copine qui voit un commentaire sur Facebook euh, sur un avis de disparition. Et voilà, et un commentaire, je l'ai déjà accordé sur l'île du Sud. Il, il est passé à la théâtre. Ouais, J'ai pas mal réfléchi, il se passait des trucs. Genre. Non mais là c'est sûr c'est lui, enfin c'est lui, je l'ai vu, je vais parler. T'as pas à me dicter reste 9 mois, euh, machin, quand est-ce que tu rentres, euh, l'aéroport et tout, tu vas m'attendre, non en fait, m'attends pas, parce que si tu m'attends, tu vas m'attendre toute ta vie, je te le dis tout de suite. 